Today we're going to be reading the, about the nodes, really, the next little bit here. Of, um, it's a little hot in Santa Fe. It's summertime, summer night, and uh, just a hot, hot summer night. And so we're going to be reading Jan Vandenberg's wonderful Crash Course on Stars, as we've been reading. Last time we learned about asterisms and constellations and how longitude and latitude works. This time we're actually looking at the stars and the nodes. Von Denberg writes, The nodes represent the foundation upon which the life, the profile, the cross is lived. It's the stage where life takes place. It is what gives us life. And they're actually nothing. Just two holes in the sky. It's the umbilical cord, the escape tunnel. Your connectivity to that will always be greater than you, like that which is greater than you. The nodes align us, allowing us to move with minimal resistance so that they can enhance the quality of life. And also they establish what we are here to see, to experience, to meet. It's all in the nodes. Yeah, you know, I, I when I was learning human design and I was I read Ra's thirty two nodal environments, I began to kind of look for those things in my environment. And it is interesting. Um I have uh you know, forty five twenty six in my nodal environment. I um right, that's my that's my uh my conscious side actually, rather, my personality side. And I also have twelve eleven giving in to temptation and all these things. And um, I've talked in some of the videos about how when I was first getting into human design and I, I got a hold of 32 nodal environments and I began looking for those, how incredible that was for me to see as a signpost when I was really not in the correct place. Because I was in a place where people were, there was no temptation, there was no excitement, there was no 12 going on, you know, there was no... I, I w there wasn't enough um, giving in to temptation. It didn't have that tension, and there weren't enough ideas, and it wasn't enough talking, and enough, you know. Uh, and that the that whole forty five twenty six, I could see how I'd been in those environments at certain times. And in those times, it was really it was a good environment for me. When I I did very well when I was in the environment of the haves and the have nots, and people arguing over resources and, and also being around the uber wealthy and then the outsiders who were trying, you know, the startup entrepreneurs like myself who were living. It's so funny, earlier today I was looking through my, uh, this was 2014, not that long ago, in Seattle, 2014, and I worked out a monthly budget of $1,700 a month, $1,700 a month. Total expenditure, including rent, including cell phone bill, including internet bill, including food, including everything okay everything total expense of 1700 a month and i say that that might sound like a lot but it's not it's really not you know especially not in 2014 in seattle it's not like this was the 90s you know even in the 90s it wasn't that easy right but, and that's what it's like to be doing a startup and that's what it's like to be the have not and then you're working with the investors and they're millionaires and they give 100k to this startup and 50k to that startup and you know and so it's it's a very different thing they're the haves they're the haves and then some of the startups make it people that you know who were have nots become haves and so on and so there is this whole world of the haves and the have nots and I work really well in there I'm a 45 26 it's a great world for me it's important for me to be in a world like that where I you know, can be around the haves and the have-nots and be surrounded by them. I don't have to get wrapped up in it, but I can be a part of that. And and so, and it's the same with that 12-11, that giving into temptation, that kind of... Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting when you start to look at your notes, when you start to look at your notes. So let's see what Jan has to say right here. He goes, he says, they're the umbilical cord, the escape tunnel, right? The, con the connectivity to what's greater than us. And he says that the nodes represent the alignment and shaping of the form. Through the nodes, we are aligned with the totality. 
So when you're thinking about influencing life, you have to begin to think in terms of the nodes. It's through the nodal relationship that you can begin to learn about what your relationship is to any given star. For Ra, the only way to see a specific relationship in somebody's design to a star, that is the relationship to a star that they have in their design, is that the star has to be conjunct one of their nodes. Yeah, I actually, this is familiar to me. It's familiar, but it's, you know, lost as one of the 8,000 trivia points, especially there was a period, I think it really was the second year that I really just learned and learned and learned and learned. Just like a solid year of learning. And, I, and that's what Richard Rudd says is common for the second year of the seven-year deconditioning process, that the second year is about education, actually. That's in his Seven Years on the Wheel of Passage. If you just look up Seven Years on the Wheel of Passage, uh, PDF, you'll find where he gives it away for free. It's his, um, or Seven Years on the Wheel might be the full title, actually. No, I think it does say of passage. I don't even know what that means, but passing of time, the passage of deconditioning. Of, yeah. And so for Ra, the only way to see a specific relationship in somebody's design to a star is that the star has to be conjunct one of their nodes. And obviously, wherever that happens to be, you can see subtleties in the possibilities of planetary affiliations. All the other attempts of doing interpretations of the stars shouldn't be what it's about, but of course, he confirms that everything influences everything. Mm -hmm.